Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Sethum and welcome back to another video guide for Ark Survival Evolved. Today in this video, folks, I'm going to be showing you how to tame an Echiornis. And this is one of the more annoying creatures in the game. They can be found around the water, so more on the beaches and stuff like that. And I'll also show you why you want to tame a Ichthyornis. Now, for this, you will need regular kibble. You'll also need some bolas. And obviously, it is a knockout tame. So that means you will need either a long neck rifle with trank darts or a uh, crossbow with trank arrows. You also need some narcotics to keep it knocked out as it is a knockout tame now very important here to know is that you don't want to have anything important on you whilst you are trying to tame this creature and let's go and find one for a start they do tend to fly around the beaches and stuff like that they have a very good use in the game as well with regards to getting fish, which I'll show you later on in the video. So you can always find them on the edges of the map where the land meets the water. There's one right there. They tend to attack you and steal stuff out of your inventory. And unlike the Pego Mastax, they will take anything randomly out of your inventory. Also, unlike the Pego Mastax, once you kill it, you cannot get it back. It simply just destroys whatever it takes out of your inventory, and it is quite random what they steal. So for that reason alone, you will want to place all of your valuables inside your dino, as they won't tend to take anything out of your dino's inventory. They may potentially just attack it. Now, when they don't have anything to steal, they tend to attack you and do damage. Uh, when they do steal, they also do some damage, not a lot, so do bear that in mind. And like I said, unlike the Pegomastax, you can't kill it and get whatever they stole off of you back because it will get destroyed. So only have the bare minimum and essentials on you. And as you can see, there's quite a few of these Ichthyornises flying about. So I need to be careful. I don't want to aggro any of them. I'm going to be looking for something that is of a high level. All right, there's one right there. I'm going to try and get rid of that one. I found one that is of high level. But as you can see, when flying, they don't really have a pattern that you can predict to kind of grab them with uh, a bowler or uh, to shoot them with darts or arrows. So you'll have to try and aggro them so that they come towards you. And then you'll want to bowler them. Now I'm going to show you firstly why you want to do that and what happens if you don't do it and then i'm going to show you the correct way or the best way to actually tame one of these and knock it out it is of course a knockout tame so that's the one right there i'm gonna to have to get rid of this guy so they don't have a lot of hp but they do have a good use and you'll see as i said later on in the video you have to be careful here not to aggro the other one because that is the one that i want to tame also, make sure that the area around you is clear of any danger before you even start the taming process. My target is right there. It's quite far away. I don't want to go swimming or anything. I don't know what's in the water. So I'm going to try and make a guess as to where it's going to fly. So that, obviously, the travel time of the dart plus a bit of drop on the dart and... Uh, all that good stuff end up hitting the Ichthyornis. I do have to fire slightly ahead of it or above it or under it, depending in what direction it goes. Now, I can, of course, change direction, and it is quite random when it does that. It is quite far away as well, so hopefully it should come closer to the land, and that should make it easier for me. Now, another thing is... This is a wonderful bug where you do hit your target with the dart, but it does and it does make the animation where it has a contact with the creature that you're trying to hit, but it, there is no damage and uh, of course it does not apply torpor. Now, as you saw, it took stuff out of my inventory. You heard the little crunching noise. That means it's pretty much destroyed it. It will fly and hover above me. Let's see what else it will take out of my inventory. So this is why you don't want to just try to um, do it this way. This time around, it hasn't taken anything, which is quite interesting. And as you can see, it does move quite a bit once you have aggroed it, making it really hard to actually hit it. Again, that bug, which is annoying. 
All right. Also, make sure that your dinos are on passive because obviously, as you can see, my Argentavis wants to go and kill it. And I want to go and tame it. So that is not going to be a good thing because, of course, the Ichthyornis does not have a lot of HP. So let's move this around. Now, obviously, I've lost a couple of things just to show you why you don't want to do it this way. I'm going to quickly get the bowlers out. We're going to try and bowler it. Uh, let's set it up here. So I've lost some narcotics and some darts. That's fine. I can make some more. Not a biggie. Oh, we lost some food as well. So there goes my food. Now, let's find out where this guy is. There we are. You want to wind up your bowler? You want the Ichthyornis to do a dive towards you, and as it dives towards you, that's when you want to release the bowler. Once it's down, it is an easy target. Just hit it with the darts, and down it goes. I did use the uh, darts this time around, so I can afford to do a headshot on it. It does apply more damage and more torpor to the creature. It's very, very easy to do this way. With the Trank Arrows, you do want to do body shots because they don't have a lot of HP. And you can pretty much do far too much damage on this creature with arrows if you uh, hit the head or aim for the head. So I'm going to show you what I do with my Argentavis to protect it in case something bad happens. And from this point on, it's more a case of just waiting it out uh i'm having a look around here that guy's pretty far away making sure there's nothing bad around but in case something gets to jump on me i'm going to show you a little method that i do with my flyers to protect small tames like this so i'll just kind of walk up to it and try and kind of walk over it with the flyer the flyer should be all right it is on passive so it should not move and it'll give me those couple of seconds to try and take out whatever is attacking me should I be attacked. In terms of taming, as I said, it does prefer the regular kibble, but you can also use meat. And as far as meat goes, it prefers the raw prime fish. Meat it also likes the raw uh, uh, fish meat as well as the cooked fish meat, but the raw prime fish meat is the best. Now, when you throw it, as you can see, it will fly. It has a little hunt icon or... Uh, symbol above it so you can actually use this shoulder mounted pet to go and hunt for fish uh, obviously whilst it is knocked out uh, you can either put the kibble or food in its inventory or starve it out however if you're going to starve it out make sure that you have plenty of narcotics it, I do recommend of course using the starving method where you starve the creature sufficiently until it is ready to consume all of the food that you put in its inventory for this. I also recommend using Dodo Dex. It is an amazing app. And all you have to do is put in the data of the server. And what dino you want to tame. And it should tell you how long you need to starve any creature for. This is an app that you can download for any uh, device. So you can find it for both Android as well as Apple devices. So... Down there, as you can see, there is fish in the water. And what you want to do once you have the Ichthyornis following you, you want to set or find the creature that or the fish that you want to get. Use the attack my target command. And as you can see, it starts doing its own thing. It will fly around and pretty much do all the fishing for you. It will do a dive. It will get the fish. It does do a lot more damage to the fish than it would to any other creature. So it does instant kill the fish. And it also harvests the fish. It does have a very small carry weight. So do bear that in mind. With this, I do recommend investing points both in HP as well as increasing the creature's carry capacity. So I'm going to try and find a little ledge here to kind of show you what it's got in its inventory. There we go, it's got another fish. And you can actually see it in its beak and it will, as I said, harvest the fish as well. All right, so let's have this on passive. We'll get it to follow us and we'll check out its inventory. It is able to still fly, possibly a bit slower because it might be slightly encumbered. So let's have a look. There we go. I should have checked its inventory here, but now that I picked it up, I'm probably going to regret it. I'm trying to access its inventory, but there we go. No, it's a bit too far. So let's try and bring it towards this ledge. 
Nope. This might take a couple of attempts, and I don't want to go on the land because on the land there are micro raptors and all sorts of wonderful things that I don't want to get in trouble with. There we go, that should do just fine. And there we go, that is one way of getting fish in the game. Very useful creature. It does look quite interesting. It is an annoying creature because it always attacks you when you are on the beach and it always robs stuff off of you and it does destroy whatever it robs. So do keep that in mind. With that being said and done, that is pretty much it for this video, folks. I do hope that you have enjoyed and found it useful and informative. If you have, please don't forget to support me in the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. And of course, for those interested, you can always find me on the Setopia Discord. Links to this you can find down below in the video's description, as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.